This is the Black Spruce Knitting Podcast. It's the first episode. Um, I love watching other people's knitting podcasts. I find it really inspiring. So I thought I would try making one of my own. <laughs> um, so welcome. Um, a little bit about me. Um, I live in Vermont in the United States in the Green Mountains on Abenaki land. And I live with my partner, Chris, and our Border Collie mix, Darwin, who's hanging out. Hi. <laughs> He's so cute and good. Um, and I've been knitting since I was little. My grandma taught me. But I've kind of gone in and out of it. Um, I've done a lot of other types of art as well. Um, but I got really into knitting last year during lockdown. I just knit so many sweaters and I've really just been going since then. Um, so I thought what I would do is show you a couple different projects that I've been working on. Some of these I haven't worked on in a bit because it's been really hot here. Um, we're in the middle of a heat wave. It's actually rained a ton. We've had really intense storms this summer. I hope that wherever you are, you are safe with all of the weather events that are happening right now. Um, but I put down a lot of these projects, but I kind of wanted to talk about them a little bit anyways, because I thought it might be interesting and I'm hopefully gonna finish them in the fall. Um, and I think what I'll do is I might insert some footage because the lighting's a little weird since I'm backlit, but I wanted the mountain. <laughs> but since I'm backlit, I'll insert some footage so you can like really see the colors of these pieces. The first sweater that I wanted to talk about that I'm almost done, it's a cardigan, is the Morcella cardigan by Whitney Hayward. And I was inspired to knit this by Will and Flores Knits. Um, her podcast, I saw the pattern and I thought it was really cool. Um, she makes wonderful stitch markers, so I will link her below. But it's this big oversized cardigan. I've already blocked it. Um, Mine is Farmer's Daughter Fibers um, Juicy DK in the colorway Namu. So it's super wash. And what's sort of interesting about this is that it's cartridge stitch, which means that the texture doesn't come from purling, it comes from slipping stitches. So it's really easy, which I really like. and. All I have to do is add the buttons and the pockets and then it's done. So I'm really close to finishing it and I will finish it because I want to wear it um, in the autumn. But it, I really liked the simplicity of the stitch. I found it really relaxing. I love to knit while I watch things or I'm hanging out with my friends, COVID allowing. Um, so for me, it was just like a really simple meditative knit. Um, you knit the back and then you split for the front and the back and then you pick up stitches to knit the sleeves and then you pick up stitches all the way around to knit the um, button band. So it blocked out to be really oversized which is what I wanted and comfortable. I'm so close to finishing. Um, a word about the yarn is that this yarn is this deep kind of garnet color, but it's got these sections where it's just like this glowing reddish purple. It's like a beautiful, really subtle color um, that I love. So yeah, Morcella cardigan, almost done. I'm talking about it partially so that I need to finish. Um, so that's one of the three sweaters that I started. I bought a lot of yarn last year. I work in kind of, I work in mental health and it was a really challenging year. 
and obviously we couldn't go anywhere we couldn't go out to eat so I definitely bought a lot of yarn um, and I got a lot of yarn for my birthday too which was really sweet I'm trying not to buy very much yarn this year the Vermont sheep and wool festival is coming up and I'm going with a friend so I'm gonna hopefully buy like a lot of local yarn for that but I'm trying to like really not buy too much until then. But the next sweater is an out of wool that I got for my birthday. So this is a sweater. It's like a raglan um, made out of green let lopey. And I got this let lopey for my birthday from my partner Chris. Um, which is really thoughtful. Chris gave me a lot of yarn. <laughs> so Let Lopey, if you haven't knit with it before, it's not super wash, it's rustic, which so it's, it's itchy. I have found that if I wash it and if I wear a long sleeve, I can tolerate the itch. And then it's just so warm for the winter. I last year knit a Felix cardigan, or not cardigan, a Felix pullover by Amy Christoffers out of Let Lopey and I wore it all the time on really cold days. So the yarn, when you block it, it just fluffs up and it's just like, it's this really, it just makes like an incredibly warm fabric that really traps heat. So this pattern is kind of a couple different patterns put together. It is the winter, garden sweater by Hook Mountain was sort of the base but I actually used some of the decreases from Felix by Amy Christoffers and then I so the bottom the bottom is a cable and I actually knit this partially because I wanted to knit a cable from this book that's probably gonna look backwards because I think my camera slipped but this book Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible by Hitomi Shida. If you haven't seen this, your library might have it. I really recommend it. Um, the cables are incredible and she wrote them all, the author. Um, they're just so beautiful. <laughs> it's like it's just page after page of inspiring cable. <clears throat> Excuse me. And so I was like, I want to knit a sweater to feature one of these. And then I chose a really simple one, which I think is nice. I, let me see. I chose kind of this like, oh, here we go. I had bookmarked it with part of the tag from the Let Lopey. I don't think I said, I'm pretty sure that the color is pine green, but I think it's like, elegant and effective and what I'm starting to realize is that I wear simpler pieces more often even though I love knitting things that are more complicated sometimes something like this I know that I'm gonna wear it so it's cropped and it has the rib at the bottom I'm really close to finishing all I really need to do is finish the sleeve like do the rib for the sleeve I think I've done all the decreases again Almost there, a little bit left. It's gotten so hot that it's hard because this is so warm. Um, I'm actually sweating a little right now. So I think that the next 60 degree day, I'm just gonna sit down and finish this. It's gonna be great. Then I'm gonna wear it. I am from New England and I, strongly believe that the secret to cold weather is just having really, really warm clothing and hand knitting sweaters has been like a game changer. So those are two of the three sweaters <laughs> that I haven't worked on in a bit. Oops, and this one is tangled. There's yarn everywhere. Hi. <laughs> Good boy. He got a haircut last week. He's usually super furry, but now he's only medium furry because it's too hot. It's too hot. The last 
of the three sweaters. I'm close to done with. This one has a little bit less progress. I haven't done the sleeves yet. Woo, it's so tangled. Whoops, that's okay. I'm gonna fix that later. This is the Cozy Classic Light by Jessie Maid. I'm doing it as a fade. Um, so again, I'll insert some footage so that you can see the colors because it's this gorgeous green into a purple. And I used Malabrigo sock, which was also a birthday gift from Chris's parents, which is really generous. And I actually have a little bit right here of like a mystery leftover skein from a different project that I used to help it fade. Um, but I am finding this pattern to be incredibly well written. I really would recommend it. Um, I actually knit the summer secret crop, I think, also recently. And I just think it's written clearly with clear instructions. I've tried it on and I love the way that it fits. Um, I've also learned some new techniques, like I did a tubular cast on, which I had never done before. And I love the way that it looks. I think it's really tidy. And I found Jessie's instructions to be so clear. I'm gonna do a tubular bind off and I really just need to bind off the bottom and then fade those sleeves. But because we moved, I've just been, I haven't finished it. <laughs> Usually for a long time, I was like knitting one project at a time and then something happened this summer and all of a sudden I had like maybe five going, um, which I think is okay for me right now. I have notes on everything, but this actually would be nice to finish now because it's so lightweight. And again, it's super wash, so it's not as warm. The super wash process, which allows things to go, to be washed without felting, um, allows wool to be washed without felting. It also, I think, takes some of, my understanding is that it takes the scale away from the fiber. Um, oh, I'm sorry, Darwin. He's too hot. So it removes the scale, so it's not as warm, but actually that can be to the benefit if you wanna make something for layering too. Um, I don't know that superwash is the most environmentally friendly process, so I'm really trying to move towards more non-superwash wool and also as much as I can local wool. I'm realizing that I live in this place that's really exciting because there's so much local wool production. Um, Green Mountain Spinnery I got to visit recently, which is in Vermont. Uh, I'm not very far from Harrisville, which I think will be a field trip. And... There's just so much wool here. It's really exciting, partially because Vermont is so hilly, it's not as great for agricultural crops, which is why there's a lot of animal agriculture, so wool and dairy, um, which for me is really interesting. Um, I didn't say, but I'm hoping that this podcast will also kind of be about some other things too, like eventually maybe books, definitely maybe spinning, because I've been learning to spin. Um, I do other types of art, like I do some ceramics and things, so I might bring in some other stuff. Um, sometimes Chris and I do herbal projects, things like that, um, especially if that would be interesting. But today, just knitting. So all that to say, this yarn is light because it's fingering. I don't think I even said, I'm pretty sure that Let Lopi is worsted or Aran and Juicy DK is DK weight. This is fingering, but it's so much stockinette that it's great TV watching knitting and light because it's super wash. Um, and just, I, I was originally gonna make socks out of <laughs> these and I was like, nope, they have to go together. I'm holding it upside down. I feel like it looks like an iridescent beetle, which I really like. I'm very into nature tones and jewel tones, um, as you'll see. Although I think the next thing I wanna share, those are the three unfinished sweaters that are, that at least I have to finish at least two of them before I can start another sweater, I think. Um, but I wanna talk about a couple accessories briefly. One I wanted to talk about quickly. Um, this is not a color I would wear necessarily, but this is for Chris. And it's just a pearl soho like ribbed hat it's a free pattern i'm gonna link everything 
but um, what's cool about this is that I was like, I'm not buying any yarn. And then we were at the farmer's market. There's a really great farmer's market in the city that we used to live in. I saw a woman who was selling, among other things, yarn from her farm. So it's local yarn. And I was like, ooh. And Chris was like, if you knit me a hat in that, I would wear it. And so I was like, okay. So the farm is called Fairy Tale Farm. I don't know where the tag for this is, so I can't find the color. It's like, I think it might be like some burnt desert or something, but it's this, they dye it on their farm and I believe the sh all the wool is from the farm too, but I think they ship it to a mill to be spun. But it's warm, I think it's beautiful, it's so woolly. I have a little bit of this left. Um, this took less than a skein. I actually was inspired and did a um, tubular cast on because of that cozy classic light. And I think it'll be a really warm hat. Chris likes it. Some of my knitting, my tension is uneven because I was experimenting with different types of purling. I'm a thrower. I knit English style with my right hand, I'm trying to get more comfortable with my left hand. And so it's a little uneven. Then I gave up and I just did all of it. Because, you know, if you knit with your right hand, ribbing takes a really long time. But I went back to my right hand because it's more natural for me. So yeah, you do crown decreases. I knit a size medium for Chris, um, whose head is smaller than mine. And it's sweet. It made me really excited for the Wool Festival. It's kind of like Vermont's smaller Rhinebeck. Um, I mean, I'm hoping that we can go. We'll see what happens in the world. Um, oh, you feel better? <laughs> Sorry, I'm so distracted because he's so cute. I love Darwin. Um, he is a little prince. <laughs> so that hat was a quick project. I don't usually knit accessories, but I've been knitting them this summer just because they're smaller, cooler. I talk so much about the heat. I live up north because I didn't want live somewhere hot. It's just getting hotter and hotter. That's a whole other conversation. Um, one more project that I want to show you. I actually have been putting most of my time recently into an Anna Johanna mystery knit along, the Kajo mystery knit along, which I'll link. But I've decided that I don't want to show it until it's done because someone might want to join and I don't want to spoil it for them. Um, Kajo, I think, means like I don't know if it means dawn, but I think it's the pattern is inspired by light breaking over the horizon at dawn, and it's really fun. So it's not that far in. You could still join if you wanted to, um, but I won't spoil it for you. So I will show one more thing. Um, I'm really inspired by podcasts, and I told my mom I would knit her something. And I had been watching 100 Acre Wool, who I'll also link, who was knitting the yell, a Marie Wallen cardigan with a lot of color work. And I was like, I want to knit color work, but I don't want to start another, another cardigan or another big garment project. And I realized I had a lot of little yarn, um, like little balls of yarn. I treated myself to the farmer's daughter fibers advent last year. Again, it was a hard year. So I treated myself to a lot of yarn. I'm working really hard this year to use what I have. It's going really well. Maybe I'll do a stash tour sometime. Um, I had previously just been kind of like buying for projects and not really having stash yarn. So I did the farmer's daughter fibers advent and I really liked it, but I didn't want to knit the cowl that came with it. So what I did was I used all of the cool tones and I combined it with a skein of Spin Cycle Dream State, I think in Deep Bump that I had gotten. There's hair everything on everything. My hair and Darwin's. Um, Spin Cycle Dream State that I had gotten in their like second sale. <laughs> and so 
you can see that there's this like shifting green blue background color not this one this one's one of the juicy dk minis from the advent but i will i'll insert a i'll insert a um close up so that you can really see the colors but this is the marie wall and nelly cowl so i got my color work fix in without doing a whole garment this was supposed to be for my mother's birthday which is in february it's not done she keeps asking about it which is why i've pulled it out all i have to do is weave in the ends and um seam it so that it, it goes like this and it's done and it's so hot but i really need to finish it for her because she really wants it um i haven't blocked it yet i think that the color work will be a little less puckered not always the best at keeping my tension my tension perfect with color work but a couple things about it i really liked knitting this i definitely want to at some point knit a garment from by marina wallen i just like love the charts um even though i love that kind of like mindless knitting like stockinette or like a pretty simple um pattern i just like i think that this really gave me a lot to think about I switched what colors I used every time I repeated the chart because I was kind of playing with it. So here, I'm also gonna, for the like a little thumbnail, that's cute. Oh yeah, we love that. <laughs> so, you know, there's parts that I like more. That's also kind of cute. Um, there's parts that I like more and parts that I like less. Like I love this section. I think it pops. I like this one. This one I don't like as much. Um, I feel like it gets lost a little. The color work. This one I like. I think I learned a lot about choosing colors for color work. So it was a really fun project to do. Um, my mother has like beautiful blue green eyes. So I think this will look really nice on her. And is there anything else I want to say about it? Yeah, it's like DK weight. You know, I didn't swatch for it. I usually swatch for sweaters, but I didn't. I love this like pe this um, peachy color it has just like some like little dots of red. It's pretty. Yeah, this one is probably my favorite repeat. So. Yeah, I have like little bits left from the mini skeins. I think I used some of them up. Um, and I don't know what I'll do. There's so many ends to weave in. <laughs> oh, but I need to finish it. Sorry, mom. So I think that's everything that I wanted to talk about. Um, I'll put in a little bit of footage of some close-ups so that you can really see the colors. Um, if you have any comments or questions or thoughts, I would love to hear them. I don't really know what I'm doing, but it's fun to try something new. So hopefully you enjoyed seeing what I'm up to. I think my next episode, hopefully I'll have finished some of these projects slash maybe just the mystery in a long shawl, but that's the case I'll have something else fun to talk about too so yeah thank you for watching and I hope you have a wonderful day